Welcome to another episode of Gardenside Chats. This is Carrie again. Today I'm at the Veterans Urban Farm and we are going to talk about cold frames. So you might be thinking, well, what is a cold frame? A cold frame is uh, a simple structure that you place over a garden bed for um, season extension. And as you can see, we've got our kind of demonstration cold frame right here. I have other things in the way, so I'll move this. This is our, this is our cold frame that we put over our outdoor classroom at the Veterans Urban Farm. Um, this cold frames are good for growing some greens and maybe some hardy roots over the winter time. Um, so today we're going to talk about, you know, installing not necessarily growing in a cold frame we'll do that later so now that you know what a cold frame is you might be wondering why are we talking about growing in the winter time in Ju june almost july well that's a great question you might find yourself to be like me in that you're an adult that's super busy you work full time maybe you don't have a dishwasher maybe you have kids that you're raising and they don't have summer plans. So you might be super busy right now. Um, when I'm really busy, I have a hard time moving on something really fast as far as a hobby. So I thought we could talk about it today. You could kind of stew about it in your mind for a couple weeks. Um, and then you can install one in your garden with plenty of time for planting success. So to be a successful gardener, something I've learned in like the 10 years I've been gardening is that you really should always be thinking the season ahead. So we just entered, like technically, we just entered summer, although we've been in the summer mindset for several weeks now. Um, so so I need to be thinking at work and at my, in my home garden if I really want to maximize my gardening space um, about fall and kind of, you know, tangentially also winter. So there's really nothing... Uh, there's no instant gratification really in gardening so you're always kind of like thinking ahead knowing that things are going to take some time what I'm thinking ahead right now is that in order to grow things over the winter time you actually need to plant them in late summer um, because they're really not growing much and in the winter time they're kind of just um, like sitting there dormant uh, so you want to like get them going, get them established, um, so that you can harvest them over the winter time. They do some greens do grow a little bit in the winter time, albeit pretty slow. Also, grow, planting them in the late summer is probably one of the most stressful times to be planting them. It's hot; generally doesn't rain a whole lot, so it takes them a little bit longer to like get going. It takes them a couple weeks to longer than it would take in the spring to get going. So it just takes a little bit longer. Maybe it's a little more challenging, but you can do it. So, um, a lot of things that you want to grow in a cold frame, you would plant in August. So, you know, it's the last, last June right now. If I talk to you about how to uh, how to build a cold frame, uh, right now you have a couple weeks to, you know, a few weeks actually, to, to get the materials together, pick out where you want to plant, like put it, all these things. Okay, so as you can see, one of the you it, one, in, it is a box with a clear covering. That's as simple as it you know gets. Box with clear covering. We have plexiglass, and this is a wooden frame, but it can be clear film. You know, it can be whatever. Um, you want the glass. You want it at a slight angle, so it's important to get that angle correct. So it's not like it's catching some sunlight in the winter time, but it's not directly catching all of the sun so that the little plants in here are burning up. So a uh, really common like specs for a cold frame are the north side of the cold frame is 12 inches. So you can see right here, this is a 12 inch board. And then we've cut it. So on the southern end, it's only eight inches. So there's a four inch difference between the north wall and then the southern wall. And so as you can see, it makes just a slight uh, incline um, that's facing south so it does catch some sun it doesn't it the angle isn't right for it to catch like 100% of the sun's rays and we 
don't want to do that. We just want enough of the sun to hit the cold frame that it warms the plants up a little bit, but doesn't like get sweltering, doesn't get like a, you know, 90 degrees in there, you know, which it could if uh, you're catching the sun's rays. Um, so we just picked up this lumber at like Lowe's. We got the plexiglass from a hardware store in town. Um, pretty simple. In my home garden, I've used recycled materials so you can get really creative. It, the angle is the most important component of a cold frame. Also facing it towards the south is the second most important. Um, as you notice, we have it on a hinge so you can open the we have two doors you can open up the doors so that you can get in there and do some work um, also you need to have it on a hinge so that you can vent it because on a even if it's cold on a sunny winter's day even though it's just catching some of the sun's rays it's still going to warm up in there I and mean, you need to like you know pop the top a little bit to release some of that extra warmth and then you know as the evening comes you just put it down and kind of protect your plants a little bit longer that way um so you want them hinged and movable we have two doors just for you don't necessarily need to go that route but but i like the the two foot like openings that makes it really accessible so in the past me open well I don't need to actually so what I've done in the past is in other gardens I've decided where I want to grow things in the winter time that maybe weren't over an existing bed and so I would build a cold frame in June and then what I would do is I just have a little demonstration uh, take some straw and this is some partially decomposed straw that we got from last year um, and very heavily mulch the ground under the cold frame. Now, if you're like really painting, you'll know that this like demonstration area is not ideal because we do have Bermuda grass, which is this. We do have Creeping Charlie, which is this one. These won't die from mulching, but um, in those are amongst the few things that won't die from heavy mulching unless you were out here every day weeding it which you, you might be you know it could be relaxing but in in other gardens where i have had grass that's easier to kill i would just spread mulch really thickly so like almost all the way up to the the level of the cold frame and then over the next six to eight weeks uh it will kill the grass uh, i can i can uh rake it up and dig it up a little bit and then plant my seeds in August. For things like Bermuda grass and this Creeping Charlie, I would uh, till it or use um, um, maybe some like black plastic. All right, so that's in a nutshell. That is how you install a uh, cold frame in your garden. And then in late summer, we'll come back to our cold frame and talk about the things you can plant and we'll do some planting. So get ready to plant some kale, collards, chard, some carrots. We'll talk about the whole gamut in August. All right, well, we'll see you back later this week. Have a good afternoon. Bye.